Speedrunning. It's a pretty swell way of gaming and challenging yourself. But what if you wanted your speedrun to have some real urgency to it? I'm thinking running the gaming system with a physically limited amount of runtime, like a Game Boy on food batteries. Bird brain as I am, I decided to go for it. Not much research is needed to find that mashed potatoes along with pieces of zinc and copper are the usual food battery of choice. So I tried it out. One point six milliwatts. One point six milliwatts and dropping. That's not a lot of power. Let me put that into perspective. The Game Boy Pocket requires roughly 250 milliwatts of power to operate, which means that I would need over 150 times more electrode surface area to get enough power to run the Game Boy. That's the size of a king-sized single bed. In addition, the Game Boy Pocket requires around 3 volts to work, meaning I need to string multiple batteries in series to get a higher voltage. But due to the absolutely ginormous internal resistance of potatoes oh god that's terrible you can easily quadruple that bed now i'm not poor poor but i ain't no midas with gold touch either to buy all that zinc and copper so potatoes were not gonna work out but i couldn't just give up so early so i spent the next week figuring out how to make a phosphate filled food concoction for phosphoric acid until i finally had a smart idea for once. I used some lime scale remover which has phosphoric acid in it. Just to check how much power I could expect in the very best case scenario. So well, that's kind of shit. And as it turns out, phosphoric acid is just generally really shit at being a battery acid. So I tried looking for foods that would contain or produce sulfuric acid, the OG battery acid, quickly leading me to ogres. Ogres are like onions. Because someone somewhere on the internet said that onions produce some sulfuric acid, which is complete bullshit, by the way. It's in propanethiol sulfur oxide that irritates the eyes instead. Kinda garbage. No sulfuric acid anywhere. But then I remembered hydrochloric acid. But instead of regurgitating my own stomach acid, I remembered having read from somewhere that putting vinegar and salt together supposedly creates some hydrochloric acid. So I figured if vinegar works, then probably citric acid also works. Oh shit! And it does! Kinda high actually. Surprisingly well, even. In fact, I don't quite understand why it works so well. My guess is that since citric acid provides some protons into the solution and salt produces chloride ions into the solution, then just by chance, sometimes very small amounts of hydrochloric acid is produced. But I could be completely wrong about this. I then tried a solution of citric acid with some spicy salt. Oh yeah. Which worked even better. Dude, that's so much power. I know that something funky is going on because citric acid on its own has a pH of only about 2 to 3 and calcium chloride solution is ba basic. What? Explain what you mean. But by putting the two together, we get a pH of slightly below 1. That's some good acid. So with the new salty lemon electrolyte, the required electrode areas to power the Game Boy were theoretically reduced down to only about 2000 square centimeters, or about the size of an extra large pizza box. Now we're getting somewhere. So the next day I got some lemons, squeezed them until they started sweating, filtered the sweat, and added some calcium chloride until the pH was at around 1. I also made electrodes out of copper tape and zinc plated steel for six separate cells, amounting to total electrode areas of about 3400 square centimeters. I used some plastic to keep the cells from shorting and made a six layered zinc copper sandwich. Ta da! After which, it was time to see if I could speedrun the first level of Super Mario Land on the Game Boy Pocket.
If only. Here's what actually happened. No way. You have got to be joking me. So how much power is this outputting if it's not able to? The fucking battery had already self-discharged to the point where it was producing only like a fifth of the power necessary to run the Game Boy. Yeah, that's very bad. Fuck! <sighs> so instead, I was left with a box full of spicy waste, which were promptly neutralized with some sodium hydroxide from... Train cleaner. As a last-ditch effort, I tried out the mason jar design from my last video. Still 15 milliwatts only. But even that would have required at least 20 separate cells. That's it. This is the failure I have to present to you. I'm sorry. My suggestion to anyone planning to power anything on food batteries... Don't.